for a point negative 4, 3 is a terminal point of an angle in standard position. You will get lots of questions like number 4, 3. Okay? To the nearest tenth of the radian, find the possible values of theta in the domain from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. We're going to start, and this is a very useful strategy to draw a picture of what's happening. Negative 4, comma 3, is right there. And apparently, that's a terminal point, so that means my terminal arm of my angle goes through that point. And this is my angle theta in standard position. Or one of my angles. There's a many coterminal angles that would end there. But this gives me an idea of what's happening. Trigonometry question, we're going to need to draw a triangle. And we always draw a triangle back to our nearest x-axis so that we can label our reference angle. The reference angle is always the positive angle between the terminal arm and our nearest x-axis. Now, once I've drawn that triangle, I know some things about that triangle. I know that this length is 4. And I know that this height is 3. If you did a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we could even find the hypotenuse. And this is the famous 3, 4, 5 triangle, where all the numbers are nice numbers. Now, we need to find theta. So we go back to our grade 10 math. First of all, we're going to find our reference angle. So if I want to find my reference angle, I'm going to look at my triangle. I'm going to go back to grade 10, Sokotoa. I know that the opposite was 3. My adjacent was 4. I can write that 10 of my reference angle, Sokotoa, is 3 over 4. Mr. Shirk so badly wants to learn his top grade 12. You just see he keeps, keeps coming. So now I've got that. How do I find that? I go to my calculator. And just like grade 10, you'd have to do tan inverse. But the difference here is we are working in radians. So when we go to do this, we need to make sure our calculator is in radians. So I'm going to hit my mode button. I'm going to go down to radians, and I'm going to switch it to make sure my calculator is in radians. Now, when I go tan inverse of so 3 divided by 4, 26.425. And you will get an E6 error if your final answer isn't rounded correctly. And one of the ways that you can make a mistake in rounding is if you round early in the question and then round later on again. So I put the dot, dot, dot there to show I'm going to just keep all of those values until later. Okay? So now I want to find theta. This theta in blue, right, the question says, and this is important to understand, okay, let's think about this domain. And I'm going to think about that domain. And one of the things about angles in standard position is they always start from 0 degrees or 0 radians. We can go counterclockwise for positive and clockwise for negative. And because you think positive and different in different directions, it's often important to think of your domain that way too. This domain has negative values and positive values. It has a positive angle between 0 and 2 pi. 
a negative angle between 0 and negative 2 pi. I like to break up my positive angles and negative angles separately because I hope you can see that if I went all the way around 2 pi, which is once around the circle, it only hits the terminal arm once. If I go in the negative direction, all the way around once, there's only one place that it would hit it in the negative direction. So that's another possibility for theta. Theta could equal, well, for the blue one, if you were doing degrees, does it make sense you would take 180 degrees and minus your reference angle? Now we're thinking in radians, instead of 180 degrees, we would think of pi radians and minus our reference angle. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that you can do on your calculator so that you can remember all the decimal places. The one that I like the most is the store button. I can take that 0.64325, I hit store, I just store it as x, and now I don't have to rewrite those numbers. I don't have to worry about rounding. The calculator has remembered it probably for another 16 or 32 decimal places after this. What we can do now is if I wanted to take pi minus my reference angle, I can just go pi minus x and get 2.49. What do they want us to round to? The nearest tenth. So that blue one, 2.49, will round to 2.5. The red one, can you see that if I wanted to figure out this length, that I would have to do pi plus my reference angle? And I actually, for negative angles, I think positive, first of all, I think if I'm actually counting this as a distance, this distance would be pi and then I would add my reference angle. So I go to my calculator and I go pi plus my reference angle, which I saved as x. So it's really nice that I saved it as x because I can use it again. And I get 3.78. But because I'm going in the negative direction, it would be negative 3.8. So I calculated it using positive numbers and just added the negative at the end. I find that for our, my brain, that makes it easier. It's like, okay, just work with positive numbers as much as possible, and then add negatives at the end that are necessary. So part B. Mr. Nubea to the office, please. Mr. Nubea to the office. We are given cotangent of theta is equal to negative 2. Again, we're going to want to draw a triangle and figure things out. But the problem is here, we're given cotangent, and we're not really comfortable with cotangent as far as drawing triangles and using Sokotoa. You don't, there's like, I'll show you that at the end. But for Sokotoa, if you want, you can make one for cosecant, secant, and cotangent and memorize it as well, but I don't think it'll be very helpful. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if I know cotangent of theta is equal to negative 2, and I know cotangent and tangent are reciprocals, I could write tangent of theta. Notice my angle didn't change the same, but my ratio gets flipped. 1 over negative 2, or it doesn't matter where you put that negative. 1 over negative 2 is the same as negative 1 over 2. This is going to be helpful because now I can use my skills from grade 11 and grade 10, and I can find my reference angle, and I can use things like my CAS rule. According to my CAS rule, Tangent is positive in quadrant 3 and positive 1. 
my tangent is negative, negative one half, so I know it needs to be in quadrant two and quadrant four. Okay? So I'm going to draw a terminal arm in quadrant two, go back to my nearest x axis, label my reference angle. I'm going to draw the same thing in quadrant four. I know that both of those green reference angles have to be the same. And since tan is opposite over adjacent, I could, on both of these triangles, label opposite of my reference angle has to be 1, the adjacent is 2. And I label those as positive values because they are like. You will see sometimes, you'll see people in their notes label this one as minus 2 because it's going 2 to the left. But the important thing about labeling things for positive values is because the first thing we have to find is our reference angle. And when you're finding your reference angle, that's based on grade 10 math, always using positive values. Okay? Eventually, some of you will skip drawing these pictures, and you will just go from tan theta, and you will write reference angle equals tan inverse, and this is the number one mistake that students make, is they put the negative inside. But reference angles are only dealing with positive answers. Reference angles are always positive angles, so you always use positive ratios. So we go to our calculator now. We go tan inverse of 1 half. We get a reference angle of 0.4636. Dot, dot, dot. That will keep on going forever. And we need to find theta. Again, I'll rewrite the domain here. The domain was from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Domain is important because, first of all, it told us we need to do our work in radians, because the domain was in radians. And second, now it needs to find positive answers and negative answers. So I'm going to draw on my pictures. If I see the positive, maybe I'll just write it out. Positive ones would be from 0 to 2 pi. So standard position starts here. I would hit this one there. So this is one answer for my theta. I would hit this one there. I'm going to need to use my reference angle a lot. So I'm going to do that shortcut again where I store my reference angle as x. So now x becomes 0.4636. And does it make sense for this one? That if my reference angle is there all the way to this x-axis would be pi. Here I would have to do pi minus my reference angle. And for the second one, I would go all the way around, which is 2 pi. That's too far, so I would have to subtract my reference angle. And so I will get answers for my blue ones to be so my calculator, pi minus my reference angle, and 2 pi minus my reference angle. And this question asked me to round to the near tenth again, so I will have 2.7 and 5.8. But I also need to find negative ones from zero to negative two pi. So for this one, this would be my theta, and here. This would be my theta. 
So my red answers, well, really nice. I'm going to start with this one in quadrant four. Can you see that that red angle is exactly the same as your reference angle? The only difference is it will be negative. So if my reference angle is 0 0.46 and I round to the nearest tenth, that will just be negative 0 0.5. But for this one in quadrant two, again, how would I figure this out in degrees? I'd probably do 180 plus my reference angle. So in radians, halfway around is pi plus my reference angle. And like I said before, I think about it positive, so I'll just do positive pi plus my reference angle, 3.6. And then since I'm going counter, uh, clockwise, sorry, since we're going clockwise, that answer has to be negative, so it's negative 3.6. So here's our four final answers for theta. Thirteen and fourteen, very important questions. Make sure you circle them and put a star beside them that you do practice these. And again, tomorrow we are going to work on our uh, things where you need to bring a lot of colored pens, so bring that for tomorrow.